is underway, and uh, it's just past three. And perhaps what we can do is um, get started on some of the reports. But I did want to uh, first thank all of you for being here. Uh, the implementation stage is usually the the heavier lifting stage when we talk about the kinds of changes that we are trying to achieve in our citywide um, scope of work, if you will. And um, I continue to, to say thank you to all of you for your uh, commitment and, and sacrifices in getting us to where we're at today. Um, I think there are some uh, indicators as to how we can continue moving uh, in the future and uh, my staff made me aware of some designations that uh, have been uh, declared uh, on behalf of the river as part of a nationwide uh, process of, of looking at urban uh, waterways and urban systems. And hopefully some of you might touch on that on your reports. But uh, if not, I think I'll just ask the staff to give us a summary of, of what was actually transpiring. But my understanding is that we are being considered or have been recognized uh, at the national level uh, for some of a, a, a different type of designations. And my wishful thinking is that these types of um, acknowledgments and allows us to posture ourselves in the future for different types of funding uh, at the federal level. Uh, so the more we could qualify for these types of categories, these types of uh, uh, indicators as to national movements, perhaps it gives us a better shot at, at competing uh, at a different level for um, funding. So with that, I'm speaking very slowly, hoping one of my colleagues will walk through that door. <laughs> or we can start dancing. <laughs> uh, so that's being said, let's just get started with item number one, uh, Madam Clerk. Oh, Mr. CLA, I already guys want to do this. It doesn't matter. Uh, we'll take plan, turns. Item number one, Planning Department, Bureau of Engineering, Community Redevelopment Agency reports relative to river-related projects. Great, so um, could we have uh, planning come on up and then we'll just go down the line? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Councilman Claire Bowen, Los Angeles Department of City Planning. Um, I'm happy to report that we've received our administrative draft environmental impact report from the consultant. We've been reviewing it and hoping to have the draft EIR out for the um, public to review um, around July which is a nice right. step in terms of moving it forward. I'm also pleased to report that um, in the, the um, report I put together last week, we were uncertain as to whether we were going to be able to um, move forward with having the redevelopment agency um, still be able to consider the plan area for redevelopment project area. And I think actually my colleague Jason's going to be able to speak to that um, right. very shortly. When you refer to administrative draft, can we let our listeners know administrative draft for is the environmental impact report for the Cornfield Royal Seco specific plan. Thank you. <laughs> Otherwise known as a CASP. No, 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 it's the CASP. That's correct. Great. Um, so, um, with we are pleased that that is uh, moving forward and uh, look forward to getting yeah. the public's comment. We're hopefully, hopefully also planning to then have a workshop this summer um, since it's been a while since we've been out to discuss the plan with the public. So once we right. do re re uh, release the draft um, environmental impact report, we'll have a workshop and be able to sit and engage with the community and get their feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, I had an interesting um, experience with a group of young people. Uh, they were part of the, what's called the Lincoln Heights Tutorial Program. Hmm. It's a group of young people, probably, I want to say, two to close to 300 strong. These are young folks in high school, middle school. Um, they represent uh, a range of ethnicities in Lincoln Heights, Chinatown area. Uh, they are committed to education. They tutor young kids, grammar school kids. Uh, and then the college kids tutor the high school, high school, middle school, middle school, uh, uh, primary. And uh, I was at their anniversary, I had 25 years now. And what was interesting, uh, towards the end of the ceremonies, uh, a young lady comes up to me, a couple of them actually, and said, and asked us, asked me, point blank said, why are you displacing us? Why do you want to move us out? 
uh, the CASP does this, this, this. And she used the word CASP. She used the acronym. I go, okay, she's been doing her homework. She goes, well, we got these flyers, but the flyers didn't tell us about the housing side, and we're being told that we're going to be moved out. Is that true? And I said, no, that's not true. Uh, this is a way to create and stimulate change, and our objective is to create a healthy balance between the different needs. And I started using the planning jargon just comes out of my mouth, right? Just, and she's staring at me like, well, what does that mean? And I go, okay. So I took a step back. I asked her, what grade are you in? And she was uh, 10th grade. And I go, so how do you hear about the cast? I said, well, I saw a flyer, but it didn't really tell us much. And I said, well, how was, was it? In, what, she was, it was supposed to be written in, in um, I can't recall. She said Cantonese, or I'm not sure which dialect she referred to. I can't remember at this point. She goes, can you tell us what these meetings are about in, in our language? And I said, I thought we were. She goes, well, it wasn't clear to me and to my family. And I said, well, can you help us interpret it? She goes, well, don't you have people that do that? And I go, yes. <laughs> I was trying to get her to be part of the process. But I asked her to call me uh, sometime this week, and maybe we can find a way to fold the outreach, fold them in, into the outreach process and and figure out how to connect. And I'm not sure how we're being. I know we're trying really hard to bring as many people as we can. I know that for sure. Because I've been to the different meetings, and they've been uh, very well attended. But maybe we're missing a slice of the immigrant or the, or the first generation who don't speak English and are speaking different languages that populate the area in Lincoln Heights. Because in Lincoln Heights, we have a Vietnamese, Cambodian, Chinese, and uh, and uh, of course, Chinese has different dialects, and it's hard to touch everybody. But uh, maybe I can challenge this group to help us with the outreach. Just food for thought, because I know this is the time in which we need to connect. No, I think that's a great idea. I mean, I think we've always been challenged um, to reach out to those to those groups. I mean, even though we've done the flyers in multiple different languages, we certainly haven't done them in Vietnamese or, or Cambodian in the past. And even when we have done them in, said the, I think it's Mandarin. Um, and even right. in, in Spanish and, and giving them out to all the different you know, schools in the area, that hasn't necessarily attracted the folks. I think it is obviously a challenge for them to come. And so I think that... So it's been Mandarin? It's, it's been Mandarin? Have, yes. Absolutely. But how about Cantonese? Have we done Cantonese? Or maybe it's been, it's been one of those dialects. I'm sorry, I don't know. No, um, okay. But, but we have, yes. But uh, I'd love I, to learn a little bit more about this organization. Maybe they can help us. Because um, I think also reaching the youth has always been a challenge, which is why I was so happy to, that we were able to engage Franklin. with those students at Franklin High School. Um, but that was for, for one portion. But we would still love to encourage more right. students to get involved. I think the, the general fear is that this type of change pushes out or gentrifies to the point where we end up hurting the people that live there. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's our intent, uh, I believe. Our policies are trying to address that in how we are shaping the language within the policy. And perhaps we need to share that with folks more. I think that would give people a lot of comfort. I think oftentimes change um, is, is scary, and I think you're right. I mean, it's certainly not our intent. I think there's a lot of good policies in there to make sure that that, um, that we don't push people out and that actually we right. provide opportunities for a ra greater range of housing at different income levels. So. Yeah. But, uh, Given all of our challenges, the uh, planning department losing 40% of its staff, uh, the fact that we're still here and pushing as hard as we are is a great reflection not only on you, Claire, but the department, and I thank you for that. And we have to figure out how to prioritize this work within the work program, and that's a dialogue that will continue. Great. Well, thank okay. you for your support. Thank you, Claire. All right. Our next uh, group, Bureau of Engineering. Good afternoon, folks. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Deborah Weintraub um, from the Bureau of Engineering. And, and Larry Shu from the Bureau of Engineering. So um, we're gonna, I'm going to start the uh, uh, report from the Bureau of Engineering. I just wanted to um, respond to a question that came the last time mm -hmm. that we met, um, and that had to do with uh, the bridge program and the bridge projects that are crossing the LA River. Um, we have at this point uh, 12 separately funded bridge projects that are in design, 10 in construction, and five are complete that have crossed the river. And of the ones in design, the 12 actually, actually translate into eight projects. Some have separate components. Mm. 
of those eight, the Riverside Bridge Project in your council district uh, has been awarded, um, and so it's about to start construction. And the question that uh, the committee had was um, what the impact is of the city's budget um, problems on uh, completing the active bridge projects. I have to say that there isn't a significant impact since the projects are somewhere between 80 and 88 percent funded by the federal government. Right. And the city portion, which is Proposition, Proposition G, seismic funding, uh, makes up the balance. Um, where we have seen an impact is when we have related projects such as um, bikeway undercrossings of bridges, it's hard to find funding for those related or ancillary projects. So those will be delayed to some later point. And the other area where we've seen some impact is that our support divisions in the Bureau of Engineering who are on furlough, we've seen some delays in their being able to um, support the bridge program uh, because of their furlough days. So if I may just announce, we've been joined by Councilmember Tom LeBond. Welcome, sir. You. Appreciate your presence, sir, and your support. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Larry to give you an update on some of our specific right. projects we've been working on. Just to recap real quickly, we yeah. heard from the planning department their work uh, with river-related projects, and uh, Deborah Weintraub just reviewed on the question on the bridges and how that they were moving, and then we're going to meet Mr. Sue. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Um, I'm just going to give a little bit of detail on some of our regular report items. Um, the River, Re river Cooperation Committee, our next um, committee meeting is July 5th. Uh, we are continuing to meet monthly with the county and the Corps to um, discuss the master use agreement and uh, perform other coordination related to that committee. The, uh, when, we, when we look at specifics, is there anything that you can highlight that comes out of that um, give and take, if you will? Well, it's, it's, I think they're, they're uh, not new, new issues, uh, okay. issues of uh, liability this and communication, how, how to fund O&M. Um, okay. they're, Know, ongoing operations and management. Yeah, how, how, how to develop new ways of funding those those uh, okay. responsibilities. Um, as far as the U.S. Army Corps study, uh, we received uh, unfortunate news that the uh, study was not included in the uh, Army Corps of Engineers Civil Works Fiscal Year 2011 uh, work work plan. So there we're not we don't have any uh, federal funding um, starting in October. Um, there. Our uh, fundings that ha were allocated in previous fiscal years and also funding that we um, have given to the Corps that will help us continue to work for a little bit of time, but at some point, unless we identify new funding, um, work will have to stop. Right, and I, to that end, uh, I'm, we will be approaching the Army Corps to see if there are other parallel processes that they would consider that allows us to keep the momentum going. Um, and I'll keep it very general because uh, these are very delicate discussions, but um, uh, we're doing everything in our power to make sure we don't lose this momentum uh, in pushing that study. Can I add, because you've been such a leader, is there any way we can communicate to the congressional delegation on this and just put it in our federal, you know, uh, we, CLA uh, type of deal? And then also, uh, the thing that I always felt bad, I don't know what it is, what's the dam out there by the 60 freeway in the, in the, in the uh, 70, whatever it is, but by, by past Cal Poly Pomona, it's, uh, it's a, what, is, not Rio Hondo, way out there. Putting Stone, is that, yeah, but there's a, yeah, but no, beyond there a little bit, but it's an Army Corps okay. area, Damn, yeah. and they get Army Corps money, and that's the whole thing that we have to look at this. Right. What's it again? Yeah, yeah I think so. Yes. Right, but anyway, that's one well, avenue. Well, uh, indirect, and we might hear more from the Department of Power, but uh, after about two or three years of, of pushing really hard, we finally got them to do an RFP to include uh, a lobbying expertise in Washington, D.C. to find ways to bring resources. So that's, that's happening this year. Good. On the, on the note of the congressional district, um, I think in light of the national environment of these kinds of funding issues, especially the whole question of, I guess, what they call pork barrel or whatever, that was really been frowned upon. And I think if certain projects weren't at a certain place, uh, you weren't being considered. And I, I'm not sure how this falls in there, but I imagine that's part of the influential uh, factors that, that, that keep us from moving as, as strong as we could. 
but it is a reflection of just where we're at nationally in terms of people cutting back uh, and government cutting back and that whole wrestling match that's going at the national arena. But we, I still believe, have some options, and we're exploring those. And until we speak with Army Guard directly, uh, I know I'm going to keep pursuing different angles in which we can move this uh, process. But, yeah, it's, it is demoralizing, but we can't let that stop us. We have to figure out another way of doing it. So, so we are meeting with the um, senior team of the, the Corps um, later, this mo later this week to discuss certain options uh, related to the funding and also how to um, spend the funding we do have going forward. Um, on a technical level, uh, we have um, completed a first draft of our um, GIS work, um, which was um, uh, part of our in-kind work, and we gave it to the Corps. The Corps gave us comments. We're addressing those comments. We're going to give it back to them. So, Great. Um, North Atwater Park expansion project is in construction, and it's just at 33 percent. Uh, scheduled completion for construction is fall of 2012. I'm sorry, spring of 2012 with a post-construction uh, completing in uh, fall of 2012. Fantastic. Uh, Sunny Nook River Park project, uh, we had been the last several months addressing um, comments uh, from the community to um, rework the, um, the plans. And now we, we have 100% plans now. Uh, now we are um, working with uh, Department of Water and Power and um, Department of Recreation and Parks to negotiate the lease between those two departments for a portion of the land. Uh, that's the only thing holding us up from... Um, How could I make it happen? You, you have done everything you could. I know, but I, I want to make it happen because, <laughs> you know, all of a sudden, I mean, that's just getting those two people together. No, Council Member, we, we had a meeting where we brought everyone to the table and we got commitments and we gave everyone timeline. Um, we're now waiting to hear back from... Well, let me know because I'm very interested yeah. in the Sunny Nook Park. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so if everything goes well, we're scheduled to uh, begin construction in March of 2012. Uh, we have also been working with the um, MRCA Legion Valley Bikeway um, Greening Project. That's a, this is a project led by the MRCA um, along Legion Valley to um, su complement the, uh, the bikeway that just opened. Um, they have a project to improve three street ends and, and some greening along the uh, right-of-way. And we've been working with them um, to help them address the permitting issues uh, with our central district. Okay. Um, and finally, I'd like to um, mention that uh, the city of Glendale uh, had a groundbreaking on April 14th for their uh, Riverwalk Phase 1 project. Um, I know uh, Councilman uh, Labonge was there, as was uh, Councilman Krikorian, and, and a lot of uh, our um, local river advocates were there to support, support the project as well. Beautiful. Well, I. I do know that this past weekend, and one of my staff was there, uh, Jill, going through the, the corridor, and it was, we were changing environments by the sheer fact that people are having picnics, they're biking the corridor, they're looking at it from a whole different perspective, and to have community come together like that on a beautiful weekend in Los Angeles, instead of it just being considered as a uh, glorified sewer is an amazing change, and to have these, these parks and council member Garcetti's district, and they're making a huge difference in the fabric of our community, so I want to congratulate you on that, because it's all part of what everyone is doing together. And uh, I just think we need to hear the positives. We always get kind of beat up on the negatives, uh, but it's good to see that there's a result and there's a very real, real impact that uh, is very positive, so thank you very much. Thank you. Beautiful. Um, community Development Agency? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Jason Neville, CRA. Um, I'm going to report to you on a couple of projects that we're working on. Um, the first is the CASP redevelopment project oh, area. Can I just, before I forget, because I will forget, can the CLA write a motion that the, in, in the future there will be a termination of the conflicts around the world, an army uh, surplus? You know what a Bailey Bridge is? Anybody know what a Bailey Bridge is? Do, could we use a few? You never know. So a Bailey Bridge is a bridge that the Corps of Engineers uses. The Corps, much work that's going to solve problems in other parts of the world after the conflict is over will be the Corps of Engineers. But these Bailey Bridges, what they use for the armed forces, sometimes says, let's cross the river. And they throw out a bridge in 
two days, you know. So we should at least get in line for any of the surplus that may be helpful. So would you put that down when we talk to, because they're going to leave it all there unless we ask for it. So Interesting, yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Pathways. I would have forgot it. Thanks, Tom. So um, we, the CAS redevelopment project area was put on hold during the governor's budget uh, proposals, although there's talk of getting it back going, and we're trying to um, right. identify a timeline for that. Um, the boundaries have been slightly modified from the specific plan boundaries to exclude five blocks, um, which is north of the 110 and east of the 5 freeway, which will be a part of the northeast Los Angeles redevelopment project area. Right. Um, I want to speak to something Claire was mentioning before that you were asking about in mm -hmm. regard to public outreach. We, too, flyered the entire CASP area um, with flyers in Spanish and English for folks to join our Community Advisory Council, yes. um, which will provide input into the actual programs and implementation and projects for C that CRA would embark upon. Good. And um, there's different seats on that Community Advisory Council. One of them is for youth. So I was just talking to Jill Soriel, and perhaps we can connect that group of youth that you were just talking about to the Community Advisory Council so that they can make sure that all of the youth seats are full. That's and, a great um, idea. It's a direct link, and they have direct access. We, we, um, we did flyer every, ha every property there, including all the um, apartments in William Mead housing projects, so in That's Spanish nice and English. And we're working on a brochure that would cover both the specific plan and the redevelopment plan, and I believe that's going to be in English, Spanish, and Chinese and Vietnamese, but I'm checking on that. Okay. Uh, we'll be able to report back on that. That'll be something more colorful that would be engaging. Um, and more inclusive. More inclusive. On the Northeast LA project area, my colleague Allison Becker is out sick today, so she asked me to give a brief report that that project area two is suspended until um, the state budget is passed. Um, but the, they did receive the HUD challenge grant um, which came before council in January. It's been awarded and the documents have been finalized. Contracts with the project partners are on schedule and um, Allison will be able to report fully on the grant activities for the HUD grant at the next Ad Hoc River Committee meeting. And how much was allocated? $2.25 million. Okay. So it was definitely a success for the river to get um, a planning grant that looks at sustainable design, um, financing of projects, yeah. Water and, quality. And kudos to the CRA. I mean, we need to celebrate these moments. I don't think we do it enough, uh, given all the work the CRA does. So kudos to you and, and the staff and uh, Allison. I'll accept the credit for Allison. <laughs> She's not here right now. <laughs> yeah, you're following the sword, right? <laughs> you know what? I'll take that one. <laughs> all right. Um, we also, and finally, we just want to let you know that another um, great project in Reseda that we're help working on is with Abode Communities at Affordable House. 77 unit, I believe, affordable housing project at 18425 Kittredge in Reseda, which is adjacent to the Reseda Park and the LA River, and adjacent to the Trust for Public Lands Reseda River Loop project, which they also received a grant to, uh, I think, to cover about a third of the costs for the River Loop project. So there's activity happening there in the valley. A lot of times we talk about it in downtown and the Casp area, but there are things happening. Riverly things happening in the valley, too. Ah, there it is. <laughs> oh, just one point. <laughs> the um, the Reseda, is that near Constable Alacon's district? No. Um, it's in Zines. Zines. Zines, okay. Okay. Great. Fantastic. Well, Can thank I, you, uh, Mr. Chair, I just mm -hmm. thought these are great reports. I did a video of uh, Hollywood movies that uh, was in the river. Could I have that on the agenda next time? Is that all right, Loopy? This is like five minutes. It's a good song, you know. <laughs> okay. Great scenes from the from Greece to to uh, the thing to SWAT to all that Hans? stuff. Yeah, all those movies. Them, them. Yeah. So <laughs> it's good. You guys, remember that one? Can we put that on the agenda. Yeah. That was a black and white movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, mine too. <laughs> okay. Then, thank you, sir. So uh, we'll note and file, and, we'll, and uh, uh, please ask the, we'll instruct the, the city departments and CRA to return with monthly reports until further notice. So thank you for that. Um, okay. Uh, item number two. Number two, DDP report relative to work performed to maintain apartments' rights of ways along the river. Beautiful. Hi. Hello. Welcome to the committee. Thank you. I'm 
glad to be back. Kelly Bernard, Director of Economic Development for DWP, here to report on our activities along the river. So this is one of your first official committee reports uh, in your new position? Uh, it's not so new anymore, though. It's still, I'm still trying to get my sea legs over there. But uh, What floor are you on? I'm on the 12th floor. Okay, that's good. Okay. <laughs> Smoking like a former WP employee. <laughs> Get to the 15th, Kelly. And then, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I, I like the 12th. He knows his floors. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chair, as I told you earlier today, I got an appointment I in my district got to go to, but I just wanted to stop by to thank you, everybody. Progress is being made. It's just you said, as your staff member informed me, the beauty of the river right now, the cleanup that they just had, it's tremendous that it's taking place. Uh, and all the work that's being done. So I want to thank Water and Power for the Sunny Nook Bridge because it's under your area there. And if there's any problems, please let my office know. There aren't any problems. I wanted to let you know we um, do have the, the plans. We are working with BOE and um, Recreation and Parks. Um, our legal team has already reviewed it. Uh, it's fine as far as that. We have a couple of things that we're asking from our friends at BOE, so it's not quite ready, BOE. Um, and DOP, DWP is, you know, moving it quickly. Um, our engineers have asked for some additional information from BOE, and as soon as they get that to us, we will review it and pass it on to Rec and Parks so that their board can review it, and we are scheduled to review it as soon thereafter. So it will Great. be done. Good. Well, Kelly, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank sir, you, sir. Roll out. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Okay. And, Councilman, on the right of way, we have um, provided our uh, quarterly uh, right of way. Uh, inspections and maintenance we continue to do that um, I, I will let you know or let the committee know that um, our group that does it the crew that does it for us the transmission line right away they are also the crew that does you know kind of the weed abatements and everything for the fires and we recently had a fire along there so they've been a little busy I will right. say the good news is that our management has um, uh, given the green light to, to have a squad and hire additional um, members of that crew. So we hope by September um, to have additional members of that team so that we should be able to um, do a better job along the right of way. Water and Power had to rethink uh, some reclaimed water adjacent to the river of a park. And we're going to talk to their water people to try to get it back online. This is the area, the Betty Davis area, right. where they stopped doing reclaimed water. So uh, we want to get that. So, but I'll be in touch and I'll let everybody okay. know. Okay. And Ms. Bernard, I want to say thank you to you. I know you've been very, very helpful in working through some of this detail and pushing forward some of these priorities. I know Councilman Garcetti, uh, Councilman LaBonge, other council members are, are very appreciative because of the, the presence of Guadalajara Power. Now with their coordination and support, uh, we can strongly see a difference. We're trying. Thank you. And how you see the priorities. So I really appreciate that. So we will continue to be um, good neighbors and good partners. Um, you mentioned earlier the um, lobbying efforts and right. uh, moving that forward. Um, as you know, we um, have issued the RFP, and we will be. Uh, we have included um, work in there to make sure that they cover um, and mm -hmm. lobby on behalf and advocate on behalf mm -hmm. of the LA River. So that's included as well. And the continuity here is important. Uh, eight years ago, it was the Department of Water and Power who funded the first $3 million to do the master plan. Mm -hmm. And because of the master plan, we have a sense of direction and how we can continue our, our whole effort of, of creating these opportunities for the city uh, and the Department of Power and all the other agencies. So your presence there makes a big, big difference in terms of how we keep that consistency going in the historic role of the Water and Power. Um, but I also look forward to meeting with Mr. Nichols. I know in the previous executive director, his title was executive director? His title? Yeah, general manager. General, uh, general manager. General managers. Um, I've had the opportunity to meet with each one of them and, and go through this process. So I look forward to uh, resuming those meetings with him. Absolutely. Uh, him and I have spoken and, you know, between budget, crises, and everything else. But... Uh, we, we will be meeting, and uh, I will definitely share with him the good work you're doing. Thank you. And in, in um, light of everything else. As we move out with some of our outreach conversations, um, the department moves out with its outreach conversations about the future of the department. It will be helpful to have those kind of dialogues about how we continue, how the department continues to be a partner, right. and considering everything else that's going on. So. Right, right. No, it's it's uh, <laughs> Nothing good comes easy. So. That's for sure. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Bernard. Thank you. Okay, we'll note and file, and, uh, and, and I thank you for all the follow-up as well. 
Uh, item number three. Number three, CAO quarterly report relative to the status of river projects. Hi. Lori Hancock with the CAO's office. Hi, Lori. I'm going to report today on the capital projects that the city is undertaking in and around the the river, including over the river and its tributaries. So while my numbers differ a little bit from what Deborah had reported, all of these re uh, projects are listed here. Some of them are listed under bridges, and some of them are listed under the transportation department, and those would be the bikeways and, and those sort of things. Mm. So the, the listing is actually from the capital improvement expenditure um, component of the budget, and it includes 36 projects that um, equate to 990 eight million dollars in total overall budget this upcoming year we plan on spending 52.5 million dollars um, 17 of the projects are bridges and uh, the rest of them include the bike paths the parks water quality projects and riparian system restoration projects great so basically the, that's what we're planning on doing next year fantastic and um, one of the um, how can I put this? Um, as we look at the leveraging capacity of these projects, you have a certain presence. These dollars equate to change of one physical form or another. In of itself has its uh, impact on the infrastructure. And so the, the connectivity of, of these changes is something that I would try to figure out how we can uh, articulate a little bit more. And we can have that discussion later. Mm -hmm. But okay. it's all about how we connect with the local communities. These new bridges make a significant a significant change in the landscape. Uh, all these other projects that you have on the list are amazing projects. So the uh, economic multiplier of these efforts is something that perhaps we can talk about later. But don't worry. Okay. We'll, we'll stick we, with this right now. We can add that component. Okay. As far as leveraging, actually, we do a pretty good job with that, the, with the bridges. Um, for every $11 we put in, we get $88 million, or $88, not $88 million. That would be a lot. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> from, the federal, from the um, federal highway bridge program. So the, the dollars are leveraged. Now it looks like we need to start leveraging the community input. In right. The Thank you so much. Okay, okay so we will uh, note and file. I can wait for your next report. Uh, next item, please. Number four, Reckon Parks report relative to the feasibility of establishing a pilot non motorized boating program for the river. Great. Hi. Good afternoon, sir. John Kapitsky from Reckon Parks, and I'm here on behalf of Kevin Regan. Okay. Department. I wanted to share with you that I just returned from the North Sulawesi region of Indonesia where I was doing some diving. And as I was about 80 feet underwater, and I looked up and I saw all these trash bags floating by. And I thought to myself, where have I seen this before? Oh, wow. <laughs> so and this is Indonesia, time. huh? But it was, it's a very diverse, uh, ecologically extremely diverse region. But it sent a good message to me. It kind of reminded me, not that I was focusing on Los Angeles at that moment, but it reminded me of going down the river and really the capability of uh, transformation. What right. can be done. Um, since we spoke last, what we have done is to provide a, an expeditionary trip down the river that was serving as somewhat of a template for the classes that we right. will eventually emerge from the pilot program. You know, just to for pause for a second, I was looking at a, at a documentary about our oceans and the ecosystems in our oceans. And through satellite, you can literally see uh, how the, our river systems, as they pour into the ocean, it's, they're like veins yes. of trash and debris uh -huh. and change in temperature and then how different whole habitats are, be, are just dying. It's, now, it's no longer just the coral reefs, but there's whole classes of, of, of wildlife, uh, of, of fish. and I mean, it was amazing. It was really uh, depressing. But but you can just see the the veins of this pollution mm -hmm. going into the ocean, and they show the east coast and they show the west coast. Yeah. And LA, our vein is like a major artery. I mean, it's and, and there our are trash areas called uh, called or gyres, which is an effect where the trash circulates and it becomes a dead zone. And within these zones, that the floating debris, the plastics, just accumulate over time, and they create a whole change in the ecology because the plant the animal life rather you know will feed on the plastic and it's uh, yeah it's a very 
experience. So, so I think the key here is uh, when we oscillate from the bigger picture issues to the core role of our departments, of our city, and how that effectuates our priorities and how we spend our monies, uh, there's connectivity there in that Absolutely. dialogue. Um, but to fold it into the sense of urgency in our priorities in our departments is a, is a major political discussion that, that we need to have and how we look at our budgets. And uh, to me, I'm hoping we can raise the level of significance of, okay, maybe the city's not here to save the oceans, but if we take care of our own backyard and deal with these issues incrementally, it does have a multiplier impact in the long run. So um, I'm gonna try to keep pulling that back into the discussion, but make it relative to the core purpose of the city. Well, one of the components of this program, I think from the onset, was the concept of education and awareness, expanding that, and, and uh, that's remained through the concept of the pilot, so I think that that's a great thing. And, and it, the need for it's very obvious when you go down the river. Right. So, uh, so in this expeditionary paddle, it really served, like I said, as a template for the classes and for the structure and gave us some idea of, of uh, the course how it would work, the length of time that it would take, what the you know what the physical requirements of it were, what the access, the ease of access would be like, and so it was a good introduction I think for the people that we had. I think we had 11 people in attendance. I think everyone enjoyed it and learned quite a bit about the, the potential for the program. Fantastic. Uh, we also hosted a meeting at the Griffith Park Ranger Training Center to hear the comments and the concerns of various agencies and organizations with respect to the program. Uh, a very blunt discussion, but served well to focus, I think, some of the, the uh, needs of the program going forward. So um, you're gonna hear a little bit more about that, I know, in a few moments, but uh, very good, at least a good airing of concerns. And then um, the department Ruck and Park says we were in attendance at a follow-up meeting that was held at the downtown offices of the Conservation Corps. So we've been participating uh, as the program is designed mm -hmm. to continue our involvement in that regard. And from that really is emerging a plan, I think, for this pilot program that you, again, you're gonna hear a little bit more about that. Um, but but what the key we there is pilot, right? Yes. Pilot program. Pilot program, yes. And I think it's, um, I think our department is, is very satisfied with what's emerging that is going to be functional okay. and uh, will achieve the, the ends that was intended. Uh, I know that there's been a report submitted uh, through our department, but I, Mr. Regan has advised me that there will be some amendments to that report that will be uh, the product of, of the meeting that we had at the Ranger Training Center so that that information will be included. And that really is to express uh, some of the the answers to the concerns that were raised at the meeting and to kind of detail a little bit of how the program will address those. So I think that's that's pretty much it for us. The couple things that are still outstanding for us to resolve is to get the full compliance of the core in terms of the access to the river to get all of that uh, completed and then also to get the assignment of this um, secure storage uh, from Rec and Parks and we have agreed in principle to provide that to the program, uh, just a matter of getting kind of the, literally the patch of ground, figured out which patch of ground and how that process will work. So that will be within the Sepulveda Basin, probably within uh, what's called the Valley Region Headquarters, which is a compound uh, in the Sepulveda Basin that really houses the Reckon Parks operation. Okay. And that's, that's it for us. I wanna thank you. I know that my time involved with the program is kind of concluding, but I wanna think it's been a great opportunity for me to seeing something, a different side of city government. And- uh, um, I tell you, Mr. Kropinski, I think a lot that we've achieved wouldn't have happened without you. And uh, your sense of passion for what we need in this uh, area of work is significant. And uh, we need your expertise and, and your heartfelt concern for uh, a healthier environment and for that I truly am very grateful. Well I appreciate that very much. Thank you Mr. Gomez. Thank you. Okay then we have the Alley Conservation Corps I believe. Thank you sir.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Council Member. My name is Irene Lopez Muro, and I'm with the LA Conservation Corps. And just wanted to give you a quick update of what we've been doing. Um, basically, we are getting ready to submit our application to the Army Corps for the pilot program for the non motorized boating program. We're hoping to have that submittal in hopefully by the end of this week, no later than the end of this week. Uh, as John mentioned, we've been on a tour. Uh, we've designed a program that has included some of the partners, or m many of the partners um, that are involved with the river. Uh, as a spinoff from the Griffith Park meeting, we also, the Conservation Corps, hosted a meeting for partners who wanted to have more of a say of what the design of the tour should be. And so we had a, a two-hour session on that, and since then uh, have been exchanging some information via email. Um, basically, the, the general idea is to have a program that runs from June through October, and uh, we'd have tours on the weekends um, that would be open to the community, and also we would have a day of experiential opportunities for kids from the local community. Uh, I think the beauty of this is we'll have some experts that will be guiding these tours that we are working on identifying, but the real beauty is that we'll also have some of our core members that will be trained to become naturalists and to also guide these tours. Mm -hmm. um, that we are partnering with MRCA to ensure safety. Um, they are more in tune with the more of a sophisticated system and they are in tune or, or have a direct to LA Fire Department, which is uh, one of the concerns was safety. And in fact, I had 10 members of my staff a tra uh, attend a training on a swift water rescue low angle rope. Not that it's that much of it is required, but it was just a great opportunity to have some of our participants and some of our staff participate in that. And MRCA. Uh, hosted us with them. Um, okay. so. but, but it's also another element of, of growth and development for the young people. Yes. And that's what I'm saying. That's the that beauty exposure. of this is that we're being able to expose our core members to so much more and some opportunities that they would never even think about. And hopefully that will uh, open some ideas of new career paths for them. Career development. But yeah. The, um, there's this, so you would be like the umbrella, if you will. Yes. Working in partnership with other groups, yes. correct? Yes. And could you just speak to or identify some of the other groups? Uh, the other groups are um, Urban Simias, uh, be uh, the Anawak. Um, it's also MRCA, the Friends of LA River, uh, the River River Expedition, and the River Project. Okay, so go a pretty diverse group. Absolutely. And the um, very vocal group too. Oh yeah. <laughs> I may add. <laughs> well, get ready. <laughs> this is about moving forward, so yeah. uh -huh. it'll be okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, also, I just want to thank uh, Joe Edmonston and, and Walt Young, MRCA. I understand they're playing a big role. Oh. And can you describe what they've brought to the table and how you're working with them? Yeah, you know, I didn't bring the, all the details of that, but the biggest thing, I mean, just really. Uh, you kind of referred to it. Yeah, just. Uh, kind of generally speaking is it's the safety element. It's them having the opera They have a direct connect to LA Fire Department if in case there was an emergency. And so um, to have that and to have the response, especially since this is a pilot project, the first element is safety. And so for them to be able to provide that for us is for us tremendous. I really feel, you know, Walt and everybody has Good. been tremendous. So if... Um I was hoping to have my colleagues here today. Uh, my intent is to move a motion to support the Conservation Corps to be a pilot program for the summer uh, kayaking and uh, get to that level of formality, knowing that we have a relationship with uh, MRCA and the resources they bring to the table, but also to be as inclusive as you have been in making sure we have an array of organizations that are along the river participate in a healthy way and we can all learn how to be a more um, efficient and safe program uh, as we experience the experience kayaking in Los Angeles. So that's going to turn some heads. Uh, so that in of itself is, is a huge step. Uh, so we will, um, I'll make sure that, uh, that we move forward in, in that direction. And I'm pretty sure my colleagues would be excited to, to move this forward. And um, so how can we support you? 
I think exactly just what you said, you know, some type of letter of support or um, just as, especially as we're submit, getting ready to submit our, uh, our application for so, permits. So it's Army a formal Army. request for a letter of support? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. I, I spoke yeah. to the motions. Okay, we'll do that. That'd be great. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? No, just thank you for this opportunity. I mean, it's been a tremendous uh, kind of spinoff from our Alley River Core opportunity now going into the tours and just the whole naturalist so component for our um com not, but not only did you change t-shirts you changed names right right uh, yes so what's your name now it's the alley river core and that's because alley river keepers is trademarked the word keeper that is associated associated with the body of water has been trademarked by the santa monica bay keepers and i guess their main um mother agency you know that they fall under their umbrella so we were asked to change our name so, so they were very nice about that huh yeah. okay <laughs> well at least they were gentle yes they were, yes, they were. <laughs> all right fantastic all right well thank thanks you. for your hard work thank you okay um uh, item number five Ver verbal presentation by the bureau of sanitation relative to river related efforts good afternoon sir Sirs. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, Adel Hashkali, Assistant Director for Bureau of Sanitation. I'm joined with Wing Tam and sitting in the back is Shram Karagani, just to make sure I don't get in trouble. Um, uh, All right, Shram. Uh, you know, uh, Councilman, I think you said uh, something that's key that spoke to me. Is uh, I was in D.C. two weeks ago uh, to receive an award which I think the good news is to receive an award on behalf of the city uh, that the mayor received the week before, which is the, the highest prize for water in the United States, it's the United States Water Prize. And that was received because of the integrated resources plan and our efforts to work together and the planning efforts that we started 10 years ago and became the example of things to move forward. Uh, and as, as part of that discussion, I think I, s I said, for us to address the challenges facing us in the city and addressing water challenges across the world, uh, we need to have three things. One is innovation, one is integration, and the most important thing is collaboration. And I think exactly what you said today. Uh, I think we are, we, your committee and your leadership has brought everybody together with the vision, with the innovation, uh, and, and the integration of bringing, leveraging resources, as you mentioned, but also bringing departments uh, across the city and uh, community organizations, uh, community members, to really see how important water is. And the river is a key artery, as you mentioned, for the community. So this is great news, and we will come into council soon uh, to share this celebration with, with the council members uh, and, and the city uh, uh, family as a whole. Uh, I'm going to share a couple of highlights. Did uh, that prize um, come with any funding? Uh, <laughs> it, it will help, actually. <laughs> actually, it was recognized by EPA and many people. Good. So I think using that, does. I mean, it, it, it helps tremendously. Another leveraging potential. It's a leveraging potential. Okay. Uh, you know, it's, it didn't come with money. It's the value of the prize. <laughs> I was being facetious. Uh, yeah. That's the question my daughter asked me, and I said no. Uh, another good news is the uh, EPA announced uh, that the city of Los Angeles is one of 10 cities in their green infrastructure partnering communities. Uh, we are, uh, they see the city as a, as a uh, model city for championing uh, green project, um, I would say multi-benefit projects. You know, water quality is an essential element, but I think people are seeing water quality in a different way. Uh, a, a wetland, a, uh, a park, a stream restoration that improves water quality, but at the same time gives back something to the community. And something I said, you know, in the old days, everybody said the NIMBY, not in my backyard. I, I'm hearing more and more as we go to communities, it's the NIMBY, in my backyard. People want it now in their backyard. I mean, we've had people ask for projects to be done. You know, Elmer, uh, now people asking in other parts of the, in the, in the valley, asking for more projects. So I think this is, we've changed people's perception uh, of, of what projects look like and what can be done. And that's a shift from our um, impressions during our master plan discussions, because there were very specific areas that said, we do not want anything here for all the reasons they had, and we respected that. So uh, that'll be interesting to see how this continues to evolve. On the issue of, of, of the water, and, and I think 
sanitation with the partnership with the other city departments, I think have made a difference in the water quality in, in the river. Uh, I think the water quality in the river, just to give an example of on a trash and, and a trash uh, water quality compliance and TMDL, uh, we've installed I think over 49,000 catch basin screens and inserts across the city. But just to give you a number, over the last three years, we estimate that we prevented over 3,000, 3 million pounds of trash from getting into our waterways. 70% uh, of it ends in, ends in the LA River. So, uh, you know, driving up and down the LA River, walking up and down the LA River, I think the river looks much, much better than it was 10 years ago. Absolutely. And, and uh, we continue to ensure our water quality and our treatment plants upstream are the highest level of water to support the habitat and to ensure uh, uh, compliance. And our sewer spills uh, is essential. We've reduced it by over 82%. And we continue to ensure that uh, uh, our systems are operating effectively so it doesn't impact water quality because that's an essential element. Well, let me pose this question to you. And, and I'm not sure how we would. Well, let me just pose this. Um, you gave an extraordinary, an extraordinary number in terms of trash and, and debris that's been prevented in, in pounds. Um, but if I look at the cities south of us, as we get to Long Beach, mm -hmm. um, how would they be able to interpret that? When we look at, you know, you look at the physical appearance and you have, okay, aesthetically, there's a change, there's a difference. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other mechanisms, any other formulas, any, any other interpretive ways so that when I do speak, because about six years ago we met with the cities south of us, and they said, well, how do we get involved in responding to the Congress members? They want to know how we can cover their areas as well that was out of the city limits. And our response at that time in a very polite way was, we have to get our own house in order first. We need to understand what we're doing as a city, so we we moved in, in incremental steps. Now it's eight years later. We're here now. We've got these tremendous numbers. We've got the catch basins. We've got the screens. We've got this. We've, you've done tremendous work as a department in making that change real. Um, but one of the uh, objectives I would be believe is to have the federal government understand that this is not just a city of LA issue. This is a regional issue that has a very real effect in our uh, waterway systems going to the ocean, and it has all these byproducts that are very positive in nature in terms of how we create new environments for investment, for jobs, for, I mean, going down the line. So is there a way to measure that? Let's say if I were to, to, to meet with these uh, mayors and, and council members of these cities, um, the deputies of the Congress members of those respective areas, uh, could I be able to translate or interpret that impact? Just food for thought. Yeah, I mean, just, just, I mean, one thing I would say, take the city of Long Beach, uh, which is the, the, the kind of the end recipient uh, of, of many. Uh, you know, water quality for them is their lifeline because of the businesses, the economy, the tourism, as we do with the entire area here. Right, right. So, so less trash, less better water quality means to them uh, more open beaches, more use, etc. But I think on a watershed level, I think we're having discussions across with all the cities. Now I think we started this dialogue with all of them now, and I think the biggest I think all of them see the benefit, and I think Southgate City started the installation of, of screens, as we've done. Many other cities are doing that across the, the region and, and the country. But I think the, the whole discussion of, of looking at water quality as a watershed, not as a city, and that's really what we were trying to break that boundary. I mean, the CLA has helped us, and, and your staff and many others have helped us in, in, in having that discussion with the county, bringing people along. I think we need to start thinking watershed, and we're doing watershed, development planning through watershed, and showing the benefit. And, and the funding initiative we're working through to have a countywide funding initiative to allow smaller cities, to help smaller cities along the river, and to help large cities also do the right thing and, and improve these things in a, in a positive way will make us, in the next, I would say, 10 to 20 years, uh, it'll be a huge yeah. change. I, I guess what I'm saying is, um if there's one mechanism, vehicle, that you could think of in the future that allows us to create that presentation 
in the context of this bigger discussion that you've been elaborating on, uh, I've always been careful, and 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 the staff has been very um, meticulous about uh, not posing, not posing the 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 assertion that we are dealing with a watershed uh, problem because we don't suffer the, that illusion of grandeur. We've been focused on the river within the context of a watershed, but yeah. the watershed discussion is much bigger than what we've been doing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tremendous, and, you, and I know you've been addressing it. So I don't want to mislead anybody. Yeah. For me, it's very specific. You know, We did XYZ sure. programs and projects. It had XYZ impact, and this is, this is the result. Yeah, and we, we, we would love to, let me think more about it. Right. I think we've done a lot, but I think we would like to have more discussion with you and kind of have a dialogue. Yeah. Let me think about it more. Yeah, just move for thought. I want it because I know that's something that's in the horizon. Great. Uh, the, uh, the other thing is the Low Impact Development Ordinance, uh, which is, I think, is a landmark ordinance to really uh, require development and redevelopment across the city, not just in the in the river corridor, but across the city, to implement uh, capture, infiltration, grassy swales, all that, and that and that's something that's going to come to you, your council for final vote, hopefully next month. We're hoping Great. the manual for implementation through a stakeholder group from communities, community members, business groups, uh, developers, environmental groups came together to help us craft the the manual, which I think now there's a consensus, and hopefully we'll be celebrating in about a month of, of, on the LID. But the last thing I want to bring from, from my thing is, is good news to you. Uh, the, uh, as part of our vision to improve water quality, we're able to develop a project and it's called the Humboldt Neighborhood Greenway Project, which is one uh, uh, between Avenue 18 and the river and the railroad next to the jail, where we're able to take a strip of land that we use for sewer construction. And, and work with Bureau of Engineering and our partners in, in, in your office and your staff and our staff in, in water quality to develop a concept where we are daylighting, daylighting a, a stream or, or a, a, a storm drain, uh, creating a connection to the uh, bike path, uh, creating grassy swales, uh, a, a overlook to the uh, area around it. Uh, it'll be a beautiful concept. I think we have pictures in, uh, that we've shared with, with your staff. But the good news is we're able to secure funding. Uh, and, and about a few weeks ago, with the help of Sharam uh, and, and working with the State uh, Regional Water Quality Control Board, we're able to divert uh, penalty money that we owed the state back in 1990 to fund this project. Uh, so the good news is we got the funding approved. It'll be coming from the sewer funding. Wow. And we're working with the Bureau of Engineering to start initiate the design, and we're hoping to have it complete in the early 2013, that's what we're thinking. Uh, but the good news is to get the money, and I think we're able to pursue and get the money. Along with another project, and I know I don't want to take from Wing, is Locally. Manchester uh, Corridor is say, one of the things is that I think we're always excited is when we bring these projects into underserved communities. Uh, and South LA down by Manchester and uh, the 110 freeway is, is probably one of the areas that deserves something. So we worked with Councilman Parks and his staff on developing a project with Caltrans on uh, taking a, a walkway that uh, along the uh, a on-ramp to the freeway uh, that is full of trash. It's, a, it's an eyesore. And now it's being converted to a, a green space, stormwater capture, runoff from the, uh, from the freeway, uh, green space walkway, connection to the transit along the 110 freeway. And that also that project, the conceptual project, we're able to also secure funding from the same source. Uh, to me, those two projects I think will show uh, how we can really improve uh, communities and make communities better communities by improving water quality and bringing something back. So those two projects, I think we're very proud they're able to get the money, which I think is the Fantastic. biggest challenge for all of us. So, uh, well, thank you for that. Cause that's that's a tremendous. Um change from what we first started with to today is amazing. So thank you for your goodwill and your support. Thank you, sir. Did they, did they steal your thunder? No, no, no. I, didn't. Didn't, no, no. <laughs> well, I was going to give you one, one minor, uh, one other one to talk about. In terms of, uh, we've been always talking about uh, for the entire watershed, LA River watershed. Right. And one of the things we always want to do is be able to reduce amount of peat flow that gets down to the river that will help to re revitalize the, the LA River. So some of the key projects that we're working on in partnership 
the example is a Stratton Wetland Park with LA County. Uh, th that particular project will take into account or reduce about a thousand acre feet of water from going into the river. So that will actually help, besides helping with the river, but also recharge a groundwater supply. Fantastic. So there's going to be a, a, a wetland park created adjacent to South, uh, Sunland Park. Uh, we're able to recharge all that water. We're going to have enhanced native habitat, uh, signage trails, and all that. So, so that's so, so, so some, some of the key projects. There's numerous other ones we could provide updates a little bit later, but at least you can see we're doing also up, up in the watershed. So from an infrastructure point of view, we're giving our aquifer a chance. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much. I want to invite the community to a, our open house that's coming in, in North Central Yard, uh, Sanitation Yard on 452 North San Fernando. It's on June 4th at, at 9 o'clock. Uh, it's a great com uh, community family event. We get about 700 to 1,000 people, barbecue, great food, fun, mm -hmm. excitement. And uh, you can look at trash trucks, uh, sewer <laughs> cleaning trucks, and storm drain cleaning trucks. But it's a great to open our house to the community, their house, to them to come check on how we do things and to welcome them and thank them for their support to us. And much improved landscaping. <laughs> much improved landscaping. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Okay. Number six. Okay. Presentation by the Los Angeles River Revitalization Corporation relative to the status of their operations. All right. Thank you for your patience, sir. Good afternoon, Councilman. I wanted to provide an update in three different areas. Just identify yourself for the record. My name is Omar Brownson. I'm the Executive Director of the Los Angeles River Revitalization Corporation. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to meet with you today. Uh, the three items I'd like to share with you is an update on where we're at with our business plan. It's a sort of a key component to moving our process forward. Two, we're having a, a board retreat on June 4th. And three, just a quick overview on some of the projects and programs that we're working on. Okay. With respect to the business plan, uh, we're about 70, 80% complete um, on drafting that. The, the goal is to have it finished for the June 4th board retreat. Um, my business planning committee uh, has met three times outside of uh, our monthly board meetings uh, to go over this plan. Right. The last meeting is going to be this Wednesday. Uh, the idea is to be how do we be both opportunistic and strategic in the sense that we're a startup, we need to prove um, our proof of concept. Um, so we're actively moving forward on a number of projects today as well as trying to position ourselves to be successful and sustainable over time. Um, and so we've taken an, um, a step back to look at what that kind of strategic implications are and how that fits into the, the overall master plan, balancing sort of our entrepreneurial effort with sort of some of the bigger goals that are in the, the master plan. Right. Um, so I will be sharing the master plan or our business plan with you. At this point, it's about 30 pages. Um, it's sort of taken a lot of time sort of thinking through um, our theory of change, um, right. really sort of looking at how we can um, position ourselves to uh, attract a number of different dollars and investors and interest mm -hmm. uh, to what we're doing, um, recognizing that we also have a staff of one at this point, that we also have an intern, Kate Hogeen, for the summer, um, who's joined us here today. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work. <laughs> Her um, dad is actually a lawyer at the CRA, so it's uh, keeping it within the family. Great. Um, the business plan, just so they have a a little bit of appreciation. We evaluated eight different business models from being. Do you want to have her join us? Come on up. Okay. Um, we evaluated eight different business models um, from being an intermediary, a funder, investor, a developer, asset manager. Uh, we benchmarked each of those um, eight different uh, business models against uh, several different criteria from fit with our mission, profitability, sustainability the unique value we're able to provide, what our constituencies value, our ability to deliver with current organizational capabilities, costs, configurations, ability to raise funds, timeliness, scalability, flexibility, and competition. So we took a very sort of detailed analysis of what each of those potential funding areas, and we um, prioritized four of them, um, how we can act as a real estate developer, how we can be an asset manager, a uh, funder investor, and an intermediary. And we're moving forward with projects in each of those arenas um, at this day. 
um, with sort of a, a secondary look at how we can provide consultant services and um, general advocacy for the river. I think really building kind of that river constituency. Um, in terms of um, the strategic uh, sort of model, I think the importance of taking a step back and looking at that from a business plan is that the, for example, the Council on Foundations, which is uh, the national umbrella arm uh, of all the foundations in the country, is having its national event here next year. Um, mm. Their call for innovations is due today, and Kate and I have been working furiously um, to draft uh, a response to that that positions the LA River as one of the most exciting things here in Los Angeles, and that uh, found the philanthropy uh, foundation community across the country should really be paying attention to not only the challenge that we're sort of tackling the opportunity, but really the entrepreneurial and sort of creative approach that the city has taken to address this issue. And the whole spectrum of possibilities that come into the philanthropic world. Right. It's amazing. Um, so I think Good using thing. sort of the strategic plan, the outcomes-based model, that's something very much the foundations look to, and that's very much a part of our business planning is to make sure that we use the language and the models, sort of theory of change that they like to see. Good. Um, we've been reviewing our organizational budget. We're going to approve a budget um, at our board retreat on June 4th. Right. Um, let's see. Just as to kind of give a, a sense of scale, uh, this is still in draft form. Um, but we're looking at a budget of somewhere between 1.7 to 1.8 million dollars next year, assuming that a number of the projects that we're putting forward um, are successful. So I mean, the sort of breadth or leverage of our investment, um, you know, the CRA uh, supported us with an initial $700,000, which we're trying to spread over as long a period of time and bring as many other sort of resources to bear in the interim. We're not assuming. Uh, as of yet, any specific line item budget in the city, um, to the extent that that's possible, we're certainly happy to accept that. But it's not assuming that it's the city that's going to be able to support us um, initially. So it's towards the steps of, or well, the steps are towards uh, self efficiency, is what you're describing. Correct. Okay. Um, in terms of the June 4th retreat, not only going to be adopting the business plan and the budget, we're also going to be going over our communication strategy. We've retained um, the services of Hershey Cause, which is a uh, significant PR firm. They've taken us on as a pro bono client um, and will help uh, us think through the various constituencies and stakeholders and talking points. There's obviously a lot um, of interest that go into the, the revitalization of the river and the corridor and so how we refine and really fine tune that messaging is going to be a big part of our um, board retreat. It's going to be at King Gillette Ranch from 8.30 to 3.30. Um, hope people RSVP so we know how much food um, to provide. And I don't think we're going to compete with uh, sanitation, the 700 yeah. folks. Um, but it'll be a lovely setting. Um, I'm thinking 15 to 20 people will probably. Uh, and that's located where again? At King Gillette Ranch. Where is that? Uh, it's in Calabasas. MRCA <laughs> has uh, graciously offered. Um, Did they make the Lone Rangers? Uh uh, the Biggest Losers is being filmed there now. Oh, no. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> it was upbeat, upbeat yeah. titles. <laughs> it is upbeat. Uh, it's about health. Right? Okay. Um, and we're, we're trying to build a healthy city here. Um, so I do hope that people will RSVP just to let us know, either contact me or Kate. Um, I think we've sent out an announcement um, to the city family. And just lastly, just to, again, to give you a little bit of scope, we put together for our last board meeting on Wednesday uh, a list of the different projects and programs that we're actively pushing forward now. And we're actually pushing forward a dozen different projects um, to the extent that the various funding sources that we're pursuing um, come to fruition. It's close to about $9 million of different funding that we're um, tackling right now. So we're very much trying to be thoughtful about the direction that we're going overall, but we're not sort of resting our laurels and um, actively pushing projects forward today. I think one of the um, um, observations I have is one is that uh, creating this business plan in an environment of such uncertainty economically at the national, state, county, city level, uh, so my hat goes off to you in, in, in making sure we have this positive direction in achieving these goals while these storms are swirling around you. Because uh, everyone is, is is right now struggling, uh, so it's kind of like you're climbing uphill and 
that avalanche is coming at you and you still got to keep going. So to me, that, that, is, uh, that is significant, and I thank you for that strong effort. Um, I also want to thank the staff. I know Bureau of Engineering and Bureau of Sanitation, the Department of Power, they've all played a role in how they're supportive in your efforts. I know there's a lot of staff time spent, like on the bridge, for example, a lot of staff time spent preparing and, and, and pushing forward the necessary documents to achieve that level of, of uh, fruition that both the folks that you were able to bring into the picture feel that we're responding as a city. At the same time, know that uh, there's a lot of work being piled on their desks. So how we coordinate is crucial, and how we coordinate those resources, and that to me is, is about this um, growth experience, if you will, uh, as a river corporation, as a city, and, and quite frankly, as an ad hoc committee and how we co keep uh, working with each other to reach those positive ends. So I want to recognize the, the different departments who've been very, very supportive, and thank you for being able to create those kinds of uh, opportunities. And then lastly, I, I think as we speak to what makes sense from an economic point of view, I think you're going to be in a great position to demonstrate to the private sector the notion of, of, of worthiness, uh, desirability in bringing private dollars to the table, knowing that we are doing a lot of the, the heavy lifting uh, on the public side and creating environments for that investment. So I think that it was very key in one of the initial strategies 10 years ago as we moved in this direction is to create an arm that can be as nimble in dealing with some of the private issues uh, while creating this environment of, of investment. And I think we're, 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 we're getting there. We're making it happen. So I appreciate that very much. Well, I think uh, I definitely would like to reiterate uh, the support of the city family uh, has mm -hmm. been great. Uh, mm -hmm. so I appreciate uh, all that everybody's been putting into making this happen. Fantastic. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, thank you. So, again, uh, thank you for your hard work, and uh, uh, we'll continue working together, and I look forward to uh, uh, reminding the audience that, that there is a board retreat June 4th and 5th. It is open to the public. Just June, only the 4th. Just June 4th. And it's open to the public, Gillette Ranch. And um, what's the closest freeway? The There's no close freeway. Okay, horseback. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's right. I, I timed it. It's 30 minutes from the River Center. I went last week. Really? Yeah, I, I went on Monday. like On a Saturday morning at 6 a.m. Saturday morning at, at 8.30. I'm sure it's even quicker. <laughs> I'm teasing you, Omar. Okay, thank you very much. All right. And I believe we have one more. So Presentation about Los Angeles River Corps relative to the river maintenance program. Formerly, formally, <laughs> river keepers. <laughs> formally. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, Councilman. My name is Yasmin Medical, and I'm with the Los Angeles Conservation Corps, a coordinator for the River Corps and um, the ambassador, River Ambassadors. Um, like I said, um, in March, we changed our name, River Corps. Not as catchy, but you know, after having river keepers for two years, um, but we'll keep that in mind, everyone, when <laughs> you're dealing with the rivers. Okay. Um, uh, we started in March with our new crew of six uh, river corps uh, that do the maintenance throughout the river, and our two river ambassadors that uh, go uh, up and down in their bikes um, doing outreach throughout the river. Um, some of the highlights that we have are um, as far as maintenance that we do, we have removed approximately about 103,000 pounds of trash. That includes weeds, trash, and uh, stuff from the uh, riverbed, plastic, and that sort of stuff. We've removed 25,500 um, square feet of graffiti along the river. Wow. And um, we've, the important aspect of our program would be the education component, which if we do the outreach there, we will get the community to um, do their part as far as controlling what they throw out in the streets, which ends up in the river. And we were able to uh, do in this, this quarter 22 presentations uh, to three elementary schools, reaching about 843 students. So um, we plan on doing uh, more this summer, especially hitting some of those rec centers, because a lot of the schools are, have gone traditional. Um, we've um, also done outreach with three community cleanup events, which that included the Mayor's Day of Service and the Fowler uh, Gran Limpieza, and uh, the Dodgers Appreciation Day, which we also did along the river. Um, 
And we've also done two events, uh, Water World Day, where we set up a booth out at the Science Center, and uh, another tour that we did with um, 90 uh, students from one of the elementary schools. So we uh, hope to continue this work. Our river ambassadors serve our, like our eyes and ears of the river, um, and also our, our opportunity to do the outreach to those who are actually in the river and using the river, uh, letting them know how important it is to them to do the part and also how they can be safe on the river. They've actually made this quarter 157 contacts with wow. people that actually are on the river. Now, when you say on the river, folks that are recreating, living, or how, how, would, you, how would you characterize that? I would say that? mostly basically those that are using the bike path, either walking through mm -hmm. there, especially in the area that we um, were doing maintenance, right. which is uh, from Egret Park on Figueroa and Riverside Drive to Los Feliz. Most of the, we still have a lot of people walking the bike path there. Uh, but we do have more uh, now that it's been asphalted that uh, actually ride the bike and actually stop at the pocket park. So that's the opportunity for our ambassadors to talk to them. Are homeless encampments, are they still as present as they were before, or do you see No, that? we have had a lot of improvement uh, with those, um, especially with the rains, too, because a lot well, of the encampments were actually in the river. Right. And um, that's kind of moved out. But um, we still have a couple of them that come and go. Most of, the peop most of the encampments that have been a long time have been removed with the help of the uh, rangers. Okay. This is the last question. In coordination with the police and fire, are we are seeing an improved level of coordination, or do we still need a lot more to go? Uh, we do. We need some. Uh, I know we've talked at the Glassell Park meeting with Mitch uh, with the, about getting more coordination with the police department because we have, that, uh -huh, we have noticed that district. We have noticed that the rangers respond a little faster as far as two incidents that we call them. So sometimes we'll just go straight off to rangers. Well, depending on what the situation is, if we really need the police department, we will, we definitely call them. And sometimes we make a, a double call. You know, is it easier to get to other. someone? Is it easier uh, to get to someone? So let's say a person's riding a bike and they get assaulted. Um, and let's say they ask, well, where are you? Would they be able to say I'm at mile whatever or street whatever? Well, what we have done, because um, we would run out to the street, because actually what happened was that one of our actual ambassadors had, um, had an incident with some of the kids on the river, and they actually kicked the front tire as he was riding and caused him to um, fall. actually fall, hit himself on the rail, crack his helmet. The bike was totaled because wow. he was going, and he heard the kids going, but they kicked the, since they kicked the front tire, we did get LAPD, and the only thing is with the good thing was that they were close to one of the little side streets, so we used those at points, and that's where we met them on the, As a we went out uh, uh, the access points to the residential side streets. That's how we get okay. any help on the river. We'll go to the nearest, um, either the park parks or the nearest little side streets, which is good that we have access to them. There's a lot of little openings there. And they become familiar with the streets along the way. Well, thank you for that report. Mm -hmm. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no. That's okay. Good. Well, thank you for your hard work. Um, I believe that concludes all the items. Anybody here for public comment? Again, thank you guys for hanging in there, and uh, we'll keep pushing. Have a good evening. This meeting is adjourned.